Welcome to my Fractal Topology of Spacetime Theory. My name is Bob Howard and this is my interpretation of how the universe works. In this second part I would like to show how a modification to the ideas put forward in Einstein's relativity and Lorentz's length contraction could account for the actual expansion of the universe. In my last video, I implied that the components of time and space may be changing. If this is the case then, could the slowing of time be responsible for the apparent stretching of space-time? To augment this notion, I would like to take another look at the relativistic effects of time dilation. Here we have Alice in her biplane with a modified machine gun that fires in the direction of travel and behind her simultaneously. If she flies along at 100 miles per hour and the muzzle velocity of the gun is 200 miles per hour, then relative to the ground the bullets are travelling at 300 miles per hour forwards and 100 miles per hour backwards. We just calculate the bullet velocity by adding or subtracting the velocity of the aeroplane. Notice that all the bullets are equally spaced. Here we have Bob in his spacecraft with a laser light that fires photons of light forwards and backwards simultaneously. Light though does not behave like bullets because light always travels at the same velocity relative to the ground, Bob and everything in the universe. Firing photons from Bob's light forwards and backwards simultaneously, we would get something like this. It may not look like it, but both the blue and the red dots are travelling at the same velocity. Any light leaving Bob's ship will propagate away in waves like ripples on a pond. Whether Bob is in motion or not, this is how Bob could think of light leaving his ship. If Bob's ship is moving, then, relative to another observer, these waves will bunch up in front and stretch out behind, producing the Doppler effect, where the change in the wave's frequency makes the light shift towards the blue where they are closer together and towards the red where they are further apart. Sound waves do the same thing and we can hear a change in frequency when an ambulance passes by or when in the hands of a potential organ donor a motorcycle races past. Light from an approaching object will appear more blue and from a receding object it will appear more red. If all observers are to agree about the speed of light then they will have to disagree about the components of that speed in both the time and the distance. Here Alice has a photon clock made out of two mirrors. The mirrors have to face each other then instead of a pendulum we have a photon bouncing between the two mirrors at the speed of light. If Bob were to fly past at a very high speed with an identical clock, it would run relatively slower because in Bob's moving frame the photon has further to go and Bob's photon will not travel any faster than Alice's. Alice and Bob have identical rockets with a laser light in the tip that fires a single photon. In 12 seconds, a measure of time, Alice's photon travels 12 light seconds, a measure of distance. If we consider Alice is stationary and Bob is in motion, then if they both fire their lasers simultaneously as Bob passes, then to Bob his photon travels 
6 light seconds in 6 seconds. But it turns out that the slowing of Bob's clock is not enough to account for the full distance. The other phenomenon is length contraction. Relative to a stationary observer, in this case Alice, Bob will have shrunk in length in the direction of his travel along with the distances in the direction of travel. With a shrinkage of distances in the direction of travel, Bob now travels 9 light seconds, a measure of distance, in night 9 seconds, a measure of time. I then had a thought. If distances in the direction of travel are shorter, should it not also mean that distances in the opposite direction are relatively longer? Pondering whether that was longer over the distance just travelled or not, I concluded it must be all past time distances that are longer, and only the distances yet to be encountered that were shorter. Because everything visible is in the past, everything should appear further away, in every direction, regardless of the direction of travel. Knowing that time dilation is a real thing, perhaps the contraction is real and relative to everything visible simultaneously, in all three dimensions. So as Bob accelerates, he and his ship dimensionally shrink along with future distances. Because all that we see is in effect objects in the past, their distances will appear to be further away. And like time dilation, this is a real effect, and so they really should be further away. Gravity is also a cause of time dilation. Could the apparent expansion of the universe be due to gravity getting stronger ever so slowly over time. When an object or a galaxy is affected by time dilation, they dimensionally shrink along with the rulers by which we measure the past distance. If time causes objects of mass to shrink dimensionally, then gravity will be getting relatively stronger as the same mass occupies a smaller area. Both time and distances are peculiar to one's own frame of reference. As it would appear that all mass has the origin in the Big Bang, then all mass will have been shrinking since the beginning of time. In the top image, we see Bob shrink his aspect ratio is maintained in all three dimensions and the universe relative to him will expand without distorting the perspective. This is in sharp contrast to current theories where by using time as the fourth dimension the transformations involved give a strange skewered aberration to the perspective of anything travelling at relativistic velocities and where Bob would appear to shrink in the direction of his travel. Follow me further down the fractal topology in my next video and I will take you on a journey to the twins paradox and even dinosaurs.